in this second week of Advent, we continue to prepare the way for Jesus. Advent is that time of prayer and preparation, an emptying of our pride and our ego. To be ready, we need to open our hearts and make room. Before Jesus was born, there was much promise and prophecy awaiting his arrival. Isaiah 7:14. Therefore the Lord himself will give you this sign. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. Isaiah 35, 5. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, the ears of the deaf be cleared. Isaiah 25, 8. He will destroy death forever. The journey to the manger begins as Gabriel appears to a poor young virgin. Before time began, the Father chose her from among all women. At this time, Mary had already been formally promised to be Joseph's bride. Solemn Jewish tradition insists that there be no marital relations for at least one year. Gabriel's news means that Mary will be asked to risk her life for the sake of Jesus. Sometimes life is about risking everything for a dream no one but you can see. Unlike the first woman, Eve, in the book of Genesis, Mary accepts the Father's will for her, in spite of her own fear and her unknowing. Mary is the new Eve, the first woman of the new covenant. Even before she says yes, she is already a vessel filled with God. Because the penalty for an unwed mother is death, Mary's pregnancy will be secret for as long as possible. Jesus is a complete unknown right now to everyone but his mother. She not only carries the Son of God, but she carries the secret of who he is. Like every new mother-to-be, Mary must instantly start living for the unborn child. She has to watch her diet and mind her physical routine. Early in her pregnancy, Mary travels with other villagers to Judah, home of her cousin Elizabeth. Gabriel told Mary that her cousin was already six months pregnant. Elizabeth had always longed to be a mother, but she and her husband Zechariah remained childless. The journey to the manger is the greatest love story ever told. The father is the storyteller, and in what was in every way a man's world, two of the Creator God's heroes are women. Voiceless and powerless in their time, the Father chooses them to bring the world the good news of God made flesh. In these tender moments, two mothers-to-be celebrate their love for each other and their overflowing joy in carrying the two boys the Father has sent to change the world forever. Elizabeth's baby is a miraculous gift from God. He would be John the Baptist. When Mary arrived in Judah and went to Elizabeth's house, her cousin was moved with joy and filled with the Spirit of God. She knew right then that Mary carried the one who would save us. Elizabeth cried out, Most blessed are you among all women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. She addressed Mary as the mother of my Lord. Elizabeth told Mary that her own child moved suddenly in her womb when Mary greeted her cousin. Mary said humbly, The Mighty One has done great things for me, 
and holy is his name. This meeting, so tender and so filled with joy, is really the first Christian liturgy. Remember that Jesus says, Where two or more are gathered in my name, I too am there with them. Mary and Elizabeth and Elizabeth's unborn child have gathered and honor Jesus, even before the only Son of God is born. Mary stays with Elizabeth until John is born. Only then she returns home to her mother and father and to Joseph. A woman of great faith, Mary humbly waits for Joseph to take the lead and to agree to be a father to the unborn child. The stress of unknowing and the faith to trust, even in the face of death, again sets Mary apart from Eve. Mary can rightfully be called the first Christian and the first apostle of Jesus. Even though Joseph eventually commits to Mary and shuts down any attempts to put her on trial for adultery, the small village is buzzing with gossip and ugly talk about the new family. As Mary prepares to give birth, there is already a lack of human will for Jesus. People have come to expect and accept darkness in their lives. They are not anxious to emerge from the cave of their own selfishness. There will be those that resent his message and resent his call to action. But we are his followers, his hands, his feet, eyes, and ears. It's time for us to prepare ourselves, to rend our hearts and open our eyes. Hail Mary, so filled with God's love, the Lord is with and in you. Blessed are you above every other man and woman. Blessed is the life that you carry for each of us. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Help us to be ready for your Son. <laughs>